Welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, dedicated to exploring the interesting journeys of the people in the provincial construction industry. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds. Join us as we chat with the inspirational individuals that ensure the continued growth of the construction industry and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast. And it is day two, and I can tell you right now what a day it's shaping up to be. First presentation out of the gate, I want to tell you, there are some great opportunities in Newfoundland and Labrador right now. I'm Alan Dale. With me, as always, my good buddy, Jerry Crew. Sean, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sean Leet, uh, Director at World Energy GH2. So, Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What do you? Well, how did your How did your journey bring you to where you are right now? Yeah, it's a, an interesting story, or I think I think it's interesting um, in that I spent my entire career in the marine industry. Okay. Um, I um, also the CEO of Verizon Maritime Group of Companies. I'm based here in St. John's. Uh, live, live downtown. Our office is down on Water Street, and. Um, we started to diversify at Horizon. Uh, John Risley's a partner in our business, and John's always investing in future forward impact investments that can change the world in a positive way, essentially. Um, so our focus was on sustainability and diversification yeah. in the marine industry. A lot of First Nations partnerships, partnerships with foreign companies bringing technology into Canada, and uh, one of those is Ampleman. And Ampleman is a walk-to-work system that was invented for offshore wind. Uh, it's a motion compensated gangway that safely transfers people to wind turbines and now it's used in the oil and gas industry also. So um, one of John's other investments, I'm jumping around here but I'll bring it all together. It's fine. One of John's other investments is World Energy in the United States. They're the world's largest producer of sustainable aviation fuel. One of the main components in SAF, sustainable aviation fuel, is hydrogen. Most of that hydrogen is uh, manufactured through steam methane reforming process which emits a lot of carbon. Um, the consumers, or the customers for the sustainable aviation fuel were looking for a greener product. So World Energy went to the largest uh, supplier of hydrogen in the world and said we want green hydrogen. They said we can't give you any. We're trying to get a project going on our own. Um, you have to figure it out yourself. So John started to do some research. What do you need for green hydrogen? You need high amounts of renewable power, whether it be solar or wind or tidal, I guess, in some cases, although it's predominantly solar and wind now. And you need significant amounts of fresh water. So starting to look at offshore wind, we went to our partner at Ampleman, whose passion is teaching. After he got Ampleman up and running, he set up the DOB Academy in, in Holland, focused on renewable energy, in the Netherlands, excuse me, um, outside of Rotterdam. So we said, Jan, we need to find a way to generate a lot of renewable energy in Atlantic Canada is where we started. Um, quickly our focus came to the west coast and we were looking at an offshore project because notionally offshore wind speeds are higher um, and that's where you would want to put a project but the federal regulations aren't developed here. There's some other challenges with the offshore projects so we quickly started to look onshore and found that the wind speeds due to our terrain higher up are actually stronger uh, onshore in this particular area on the west coast than they are offshore. So. We went over in December to, to meet with Jan at the Academy and uh, he put on a crash course for John and I over the weekend on renewable energy and how we might attack this, this green energy, uh, sorry, green hydrogen manufacturing locally and brought together a number of experts through uh, John's relationships uh, and, and our relationships with, with Jan and, and generally in the, the renewable sector and um, we've got a great, great team of um, partners and, and consultants that have brought this project to where it is now. We're not at the final investment decision at, at this point, but we haven't seen any red flags and we're quite excited about continuing to put significant resources into it and try and develop it to a final investment decision sometime in the spring. I mean, it's a great opportunity for Newfoundland and Labrador, and indeed I would argue it's a great opportunity for the globe. What you're producing here, the end product, uh, destined for Europe, I guess your first customer? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Al. Yeah. Um, initially, as mentioned, it was all about can we manufacture this green hydrogen for um, helping to green up sustainable aviation fuel. 
But uh, very quickly we found that there is a massive demand for it in, in Germany primarily, but across Europe and in the Far East also. So uh, the focus uh, has broadened, let's say. Um, we still uh, want to support our, our partner in, in the U.S. with the requirements for SAF, um, but we're in discussion with a number of German off-takers on um, them being the customers for the product as well. A big piece of this, of course, Sean, would be education, not only educating the public on what you're doing, but beyond that, educating a workforce, because this is a, a, rel a relatively emerging technology, although it's been around for a couple of decades, but uh, in, in this scale, an emerging technology, what is the focus on education to educate people into this industry? Well, that, that's uh, one of the things we focused on at the outset, DOB Academy, who I mentioned mm -hmm. in, in the Netherlands, is a partner in the project. Um, they supported it in various ways, and part of our MOU with Alipu involves a project facilitating a relationship between DOB Academy, who again, we've been partners with the CEO of that through, through Ampleman for five years, a uh, wonderful relationship and very trusted relationship. So we introduced Jan van der Teppel, is his name, to, to Chief Mitchell. Uh, back in March and started that relationship so that they could start a community and industry training academy in Stephenville together. So they're progressing that plan. Um, that dovetails with what the College of the North Atlantic uh, needs to do and they're going to be announcing very shortly some exciting new programs for renewable energy uh, as I understand it. Um, so you'll have the DOB Halibu Academy uh, conducting the in industry and, and community education, diploma granting courses from the college, and then of course the discussion started with the university on what expertise we might need at the degree uh, level. Um, had a conversation at, at the conference, and this is why these conferences are great to connect yeah. people with a um, lady from um, Academy Canada who asked a question. And there's definitely a role for them to play. We all need to band together to train the workforce of the future. I have to tell you, it's in, it's incredible to watch governments, industry, and academia come together in this conversation for the uh, for the benefit of all. Uh, one thing I did notice on your presentation, there's a lot of bricks and mortar there. You're setting up a pretty large scale plant or plants, which means good thing for the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. Tell me about the opportunities that might exist for this group. Uh, we're already engaged with uh, many of the members of the Construction Association and we're just at the, at, at the beginning of the project. As mentioned, we haven't reached FID yet, but there's work that we need to do in order to, to keep the, the schedule and the commitment that Canada's made to Germany to deliver green hydrogen by the end of 2025. So I mentioned in my talk or in response to one of the questions that uh, Vice Chancellor Habeck came to us in Stephenville and said, you deliver in 2025, I'll be there to cut the ribbon for the first shipment. It's really important to, to our allies that, that we're there to support them. It's important for, for climate change that we stay in this industry up as quickly as possible. And it's important for the province. We don't want this opportunity to pass us by. So we are in a race against the rest of the world. We believe all the projects in the region are complementary, and they are. We're, we're trading information with the other project proponents in Atlantic Canada on a regular basis. Um, but, but we need to be first from a regional perspective to help deliver on this. And the support of the Construction Association membership is the only way that's going to happen. There's going to be massive opportunities for the entire membership and beyond. I love the way you talk about first, first, first. You are a first mover here. This is, uh, at this scale, you are certainly a first mover. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very exciting time to be in that space. and. You talked about it can be done here. It can be done in Newfoundland and Labrador. We've done similar things here before. Tell me this, what is the recipe for success here that makes things like this possible to happen? What's the secret sauce here? Uh, people, first of all. You gotta have the right people. Um, you know, starting with, with John Risley, um, <coughs> Brendan Paddock, Gene Jabolis, uh, my fellow fellow directors in the company, and, and this was John's idea initially, um, and bringing those folks together initially, and then leveraging the rest, the, the other relationships that we have in this new industry, or that can help us develop this new industry, um, to come on board. And a lot of these are based on a handshake and a phone call at this point. Um, so having the people, the trusted relationships, 
and, and the passion to make something like this happen is, is first and foremost. I mean, you know, the federal government and the provincial government, they're, I mentioned in my talk, that they're doing wonderful things to try and adapt to this new industry and the timeline. And we're so appreciative of, of their efforts and, and their support. Um, it's everyone coming together, and, and that's what it's going to take, and we need to stay focused on the opportunity. Um, standing up a new industry like this and driving uh, an opportunity that requires this type of first mover advantage takes everyone's full support. So, uh, you know, I continue to remind everyone that, uh, sure, there, there's going to be rubs here and there as you do this type of thing, but let's talk about it, let's get it on the table, but let's keep focused on the goal here. I just want to say this, that, you know what, optimism and hope is what you are bringing here to be leading something like this and listen to you articulate it. I've seen it in the media, but I'm excited. I think the province is excited. Frankly, the country's excited. Sean, keep doing what you're doing. You and all those leaders that you mentioned, kudos to each and every one of you for bringing something like this to the province. Oh, this is a game changer, Sean. Thank you very much for telling us about it. Uh, thank you very much, as Jerry said, for the leadership that you're providing to the province. And uh, we wish you the most success, and, and I'm sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. This is the future of Newfoundland and Labrador, and you're right on the pointy end of this thing. So well done, and keep up the great work. Well, we all are. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Appreciate the interest. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. Produced by Gale Force Winds.